policy coherence is really kind of three things. First is, is thinking systematically about what is the nature of a policy problem? How do you best tackle it? How do you deal with the issues that are you know, surrounding institutional complexity or the way people function within institutions? So it's thinking through the problem, thinking then around the environment to tackle that solution. Are the right actors in the room? Have you got the right approaches? Are you thinking in a kind of coherent, holistic way about the, the nature of the problem you're trying to tackle with this policy process? And then finally, it's understanding you know, what's working and isn't working. So it's about monitoring and evaluation and learning from policy implementation. It's really trying to, to, to get more information out of the process itself, evaluation, um, particularly around the sort of melia, the, the monitoring, evaluation, learning, and impact assessment grouping of, of activities. That's where we're thinking we have to put particular emphasis so that the Kenyan government county level, national level, can, can really understand what progress is being made and if things aren't going so well in that direction, maybe shift direction a little bit. For me, co policy coherence uh, is just um, a way of saying, let's have integrated uh, policy uh, process to ensure that uh, everything is moving together uh, in achieving uh, the outcome or the objective that we have set for the development agenda. Uh, policies that are needed, of course. We know food policies, that's what have always been there. We need policies that we continue, we continue to address the issues of increased productivity, and uh, production and productivity, because we know fa fa uh, Kenya is, uh, we, don't, we are not food secure. There are also policies around the issues of uh, subsidies, inputs, financial inclusion, because we know that uh, not many of our farmers are able to access credit. Issues, issues of food safety have been mentioned here. Gender inclusion, because we are saying there is a place for youth and women in agriculture. All this we are going to address. There are issues to do with livestock policy, veterinary policy. There are also issues to do with mechanization policy to, include, uh, to, to increase efficiency in production. I believe strongly that uh, this will bring a lot of efficiency in the way we conduct uh, our agricultural research in the way you also pick the issues from the beneficiaries of agricultural research, there will be better collaboration between the CGIR and the national institutions. So uh, I do believe this efficiency will definitely make it easier for the smallholders to get these technologies earlier, and those technologies will address more, more, more precisely the issues that may be on the ground. But given the resources that exist, we need to sit together and see what do we prioritize based on the needs. And that is why we are saying now the, the issue of even doing public participation so that we can have evidence-based uh, policy, the issue of uh, managing data, collecting data, collecting the data, using a very good m and &E system where we can be able to monitor what we are doing and also at the same time identify where the gaps exist. That common platform is what we need and I see through this initiative we will now bring together not just the, the two levels of government but also the other development partners Private sector involvement is also key because we appreciate that there is room for everybody in the agriculture space. We can see very clearly the role that uh, we are supposed to do and the support that uh, uh, we are going to get in working together with all the stakeholders.